Jehovah Rohi knows his sheep. He said, I'm the good shepherd and I know my sheep. The Lord knoweth them that are his. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. David said, the Lord knows me. Folks, I'm so glad God made that so clear to me. He knows me. He knows all my frailties. He knows my weaknesses. He knows when I'm exaggerating. He knows when I'm jealous. But he also knows something else, the same thing he knew about David. He knew that David would not hide his sins, that David would confess them openly before him. He said, I know, David, everything about you. I know my sheep. I'm glad for that. I'm glad there's nothing hidden from God's eyes. And in spite of that, he loves me. Now, folks, get this picture again. Let's leave the Green Valley and go up the hill and on the other side of it. The shepherd's gathering his lost herding sheep. And he's got a pull there. Now, over here on this side, there are no trees. There's no grass. There's no water. And the shepherd's gathering his flock. And David's among that flock that they are hurting and they're bruised and you see the shepherd now calling them by name how wonderful it must have been for David at that time to hear his name you see restoration begins with a fresh revelation of the love of Jehovah Rohi for his sheep I believe this is the greatest battle that a Christian has is to maintain this imprint in his soul that God loves me that at times I fail, I do things that grieve the Holy Spirit, but He loves me. I've come to examine my own heart on this many times after preaching it to so many people to go to prisons, for example, and other times and preach about the love of God and so seldom feel loved by God even though I knew the scripture and everything else. You can know the Bible, you can know the workings of the Spirit, you can be a preacher, you can be a teacher, you can talk about how God gives such grace in times of need and all of this. David knew that, and yet he said, I've gone astray. It didn't mean that he turned his back on God. He had strayed from the knowledge that should have been imprinted in his crisis. He forgot about the love of God for him. He strayed from the love of God. He's the shepherd to everyone here this morning that's wounded and hurt, and you're having a real time of testing. You're going through it right now. You dare not accuse God of abandoning you. He is still your shepherd. The Lord Jehovah Roy is still walking beside you, and he wants to bring healing. He says he causes me to lie down in Hebrew. If you study the Hebrew content of it, the real meaning is that he takes up residence beside us for the purpose of healing and restoration. He sits down right beside you in that green valley. He's not there, up there on the hill meditating. He's down there. He's got surgeon's knife in his hands. As that shepherd uh, feeling the pain and calling them by name and doing all this marvelous work of healing, it, it seems to me the Lord all through the scriptures just crying and screaming, uh, reaching out to try to show us his tenderness. He reveals himself to us as a mother hen who gathers her chicks under his wings. He, he speaks to us as a father, as a brother, sticks closer than a friend. He gives us all of these illustrations as a bridegroom wanting his bride. They're all tender revelations of his nature, tender, loving care and all of these. How many times over and over he said, yes, I'm a majestic God. Yes, I'm the Lord of hosts. All of these revelations in my name, fine. But the real revelation I want you to have that will bring you through is this tenderness of Jehovah Roy. I'm your loving, caring shepherd. I love you. Lord, I pray that you would give us now by your Holy Spirit the knowledge, the truth, and even the feeling of your great love for us. There's some that listen to me, Holy Spirit, that have grieved you. Things that have, you've been trying to rid their life of. Problems that have come because of their own doing and even foolishness. But you said in that time, that is when the love of God is most needed. Oh, precious Holy Spirit, come. Let the love of Jesus, the love of our God, embrace us now. Let there be a godly sorrow for sin. Let there be a godly sorrow for sin. David said, I trust in him because he is my salvation. He is my strength. 
Forgive us, Lord, where we have failed you. Forgive us for straying away from your love. Lord, I think that's the most lost person on earth. The most lost person is not a drug addict or an alcoholic. The lost person is that believer who's lost the sense and knowledge of your love. God, bring us back to your love. 